One day, Lord Chaitanya was sitting in the midst of his bhaktas. Haridas, you are my dear most servitors. I have a request of you. Go to every man in the town. Walk from door to door and tell them about Sri Krishna, who is the life of everyone. Please, don't distinguish between the rich, the poor, the ignorant or the foolish, high or low, or Brahmin or Sudra. I want you to go and save them all. Yes, my lord. Haridas and Nittai were selected for the purpose of proclaiming Sri Krishna for very good reasons. They were aesthetics and incomparably pious, and they had acquired the power of imparting the Holy Spirit. Nittai and Haridas accepted the task with due humility. The duty was that he, they were to impose upon them was to start early in the morning to travel from door to door, deliver the message, and then return at home at noon. In Nadia, the simple message proclaimed by Haridas and Nittai produced wonderful effects. Most men accepted, and it was because they were backed by the force which messiahs carry with them. Many did not. In fact, a few received the bearers of the message with ridicule and even insults. Haridas, 
Please, let us go. Jagai and Madai were two Brahmin youths who were city chieftains of Nadia <clears throat> under the Chan Kazi. But in reality, they were absolute masters of the lives and the property of the citizens. After gathering a large band of scoundrels, they used the power atrociously. They treated the citizens in a manner no human should be treated. Under the influence of alcohol, they robbed and raped the people mercilessly sparing neither man or woman. They were the greatest sinners of their time. fellow beings knew, knew, knew no bounds, and for those who were fallen, he felt the most profound pity. His notion was that Jagai and Madai, in spite of their worldly prosperity, were the most miserable of sinners. For Nittai, the afterworld, and the suffering of sinners, there were a stern reality. He knew that the brothers would suffer terribly hereafter. The condition of these two brothers, therefore, called for his earnest consideration. But he was further helped in his deep resolution of converting the brothers by motives of policy. Namely, in order that these two men, so well known in the country and so dreaded by the people, might bear witness to the reality of the avatar Sri Gauranga. Please tell the Lord for me. My Lord, 
I can understand that you can deliver the entire universe simply by your glance. So these two brothers, Jagai and Marai, they are already delivered. The will of the Lord is so hard. I can understand that Sri Krishna Chaitanya has requested both you and I to approach all without distinction. But it's also enjoined that we should avoid the envious. We are simply attracting them to commit offenses to you. Not only that, my Lord, they are in an intoxicated condition with pride and wine is so dangerous. You know, my Lord, he is supremely playful, and he is supremely unconventional. And we should also be like him, and fancy the condition of these wicked hearts. If we do not save them, Haridas, then who will? Our mission is to save everyone, even the lowest. Oh, did I? Let us go. Don't cry, Nitai! Nitai! You killed me with your tears, It happened, however, that the two brothers pitched their tents in the corner of town where the Lord lived. This did not stop the kirtans, of course. One night, the drunken brothers came upon a kirtan, being attracted to the sound. But finding no entrance, entrance, <clears throat> they danced and drank until the early morning. As the Lord and his devotees left the building, the brothers approached the group <clears throat> and asking him what this, his theatrical group was singing about. The Lord ignored him and left. Nittai and Haridas, seeing this, were, were disappointed, having hoped that when the Lord saw them, he would open their hearts. <coughs> Are you not 
not ashamed of committing an assault upon an unarmed man, a stranger, a devotee, who has sworn never to hold a lethal weapon? Did he not come here to serve you? Did he hurt you? You are accumulating sins incessantly upon your head, and you do not seem to be getting tired of it. Did you not think a day of reckoning would come in which you would have to make full account of your actions? Well, let me tell you, that day has come! Jagai and Marai, prepare to receive your due punishment! Chakra! 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 Mercy, my lord! Please have mercy on me. And for this, I am eternally grateful to you. You deserve a reward from me. And so here it is. Let me embrace you. Oh, no. <laughs> mercy, Lord, mercy. Your case is not so simple as you may think, Marai. <laughs> My Lord, we are all your children. I am also one of your children. Therefore, you cannot cast me away. You, a son of God? Did you ever recognize it? Why then did you maltreat your brothers? You, who thought you were the Lord of all. You, before whom men begged with folded hands and knees, now kneel before me as a worshiper, a devotee in the presence of this crowd of people? You should be ashamed. What? You, the best dressed man in town, now roll with your fine robes in the dust, weeping as helplessly as those whom you made to weep before you. Are you not ashamed? Blinded by material prosperity, you crushed out all the fine sentiments given to you by a merciful God, so that you may be a, he a help to your fellow man. But no, you trampled the weak, the poor, the innocent. And now you claim your right as the child of the same father who created all? Have you no shame left? Oh, Lord, I see I am finished. Yet somehow, all hope has not deserted me. Am I to be abandoned thus forevermore? My Lord, I do not ask for forgiveness, nor am I afraid of punishment. Let it come and I shall welcome it. Only tell me, is there any way, any penance by which I can, at any future time, obtain your lotus feet? Well. Please tell me the way if there is one. Then, then you may cast me off. If you come to that, I can't help you. 
You have offended the lotus feet of Sri Padvityananda. If you can, by any means, receive his mercy, then there is some hope for you. Mercy! Oh, Lord! Mercy! Do not forgive him too readily, thus making him take his sins lightly. Let me implore your mercy for him on his behalf. He's a poor wretch. <laughs> My dear Lord, you are the supreme controller. You are the supreme truth. And it is you who took mercy on your child, Madai. And it is you who desires to save him through me. Always giving credit to your devotees. Let thy will be done. If it is through me that he is to be saved, then I say to you, my Lord, I forgive him. Not only do I forgive him, but I forgive him unconditionally. Nay, let me tell you how I feel. Let the heavens and the earth, all these dwellers, take witness. I not only forgive Madai unconditionally, but I grant over to him all the pious merit that I may have obtained through all the good acts that I have performed throughout the entire course of my whole existence. My dear Madai, come, come to my bosom. And let the little world see that there is no smoking, drinking, you should give up. Come today. Then surely the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas Thakur will come and by their mercies Nityananda Prabhu will be good. Nimai, that is Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will be very merciful to you. If anyone doing Offenses to the Lord's feet of devotees, Mahaprabhu cannot do anything. But if Haridas Thakur will be so pleased and he will request Nityananda Prabhu, and then Nityananda Prabhu will be mercifully and when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will know the will of Nityananda Prabhu, all will be. Excellent and all have Krishna Prem. So I am requesting all those who are not following all these principles, you should try to very strongly don't take my. I have heard from devotees, so many disciples of Swamiji, lacking of association. Now they are returning to the same point. Now they are taking 
drops, wines, becoming more lusty, and so many bad qualities in them. So, I have come ordered by Swamiji, Bhakti Vedanta Swamiji, to remind you. And this play, not play, only to remind you all. Especially those who are playing this drama from today. Be pure as Nityananda Prabhu wanted. Then, if any effect will come, if anyone teaching anything to the body, but if he is not pure, not qualified, his teachings will be very, <coughs> no effect. It will be for temporary effects. So the gurus who are not qualified to teach, and if they are teaching anything, don't take wine, don't take drugs, don't cheat anyone. They can listen for a moment, momentary results. But if you will be like that, yourself, not taking wine, no anything, no smoking, no drugs, no yajlasam, then all the devotees are bound to follow this. So my request is that we should again come in the same uh, time eh? as Swamiji came here. You should think that Swamiji is here. And you should again be inspired like same time. So he has sent me to see or they are following me or not. So when I will return, what I will tell? <laughs> so if you are promising like that, then I will go and meet him and tell, oh, I am happy, I am satisfied. All are following you and always remembering, always keeping you in your heart and your words. Go, Prima. So you should do Kirtan all. And Jagai Madai, after that, he told that from now we will not do anything wrong. We are taking promise for this. And they began to wash the ghat, bank, bank of the river. And the ladies who were not going there in fear of Jagai Madai, Jagadananda and Madhavananda, when they heard that, oh, they have been changed by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Nityananda Prabhu and Haridas. Now again they began to see him and to take bath on Nagariya Ghat where Jagai Madhai was playing. And they were cleaning. How cleaning? Pruming the Ghat, clearing the Ghat. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, 